welcome to season three of the Two Pesos podcast. Yay! Hey! Um, <laughs> we Let me start by apologizing for taking a whole ass year to get back uh, to the show. Uh, sorry, you guys have threatened us. <laughs> You've been hounding us. Hounding us, but we obviously we know it's coming from a place of love. So we're back and we're sorry that we took so long. But as you can tell, if you're joining us on YouTube for the first time or... If you follow us on YouTube or anything like that, you'd be able to tell there's a huge difference this season. Yeah. And that is we're rolling live on video. Well, it won't be live by the time you see mm-hmm. it, but you can actually see, see us. us yeah. uh, we're still reporting straight from the booth. DS Media and TM, what's good? <laughs> uh, we got Perry behind the camera holding us down. We got yeah. Seshi in the corner holding us down. So you get to see the process and what it actually looks like when we record we're recording. Week. Yeah. And... Uh, I don't want to say too much. I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, I am too, well. but we'll get over this. Um, <laughs> I won't always be dressed up, so please, because, like, it's not that deep. Right? Oh, this is our Sunday best. Like, yeah, seen us because it's episode best. one, but, like, by episode five, I'll you be You've seen pajamas. enough pajamas and things, you know? <laughs> so just get ready, please. We back, okay? Right. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. Okay. Episode one for season three. So in the news, um, in absolute rubbish behavior, Uh-oh. yeah, uh, women in Tanzania are being attacked again. So what's happening is that um, there was a there was a, um, a story about a woman who complained. She was in her room. Somebody came into her room and attacked her and raped her. Oh, now yeah, he slashed her neck apparently. Oh, and the, but Christ. the very bizarre thing about this was that the guy had oiled oiled up himself, so he had put grease all over his body, so he couldn't, so get, so he couldn't get caught. Wow. And this thing ha- actually has a name. It's called Teleza. Now, this hmm. thing has been happening since 2014. And at the time, people reduced it to, ah, oh, well, they're just sex workers. And I'm saying that even if they're just sex workers, do they deserve to be raped? That's just exactly. absolute, you know? So in 2016, um, it got worse. And then the regional commanding officer, one Martin Atin or something, he said, well, this is just a little issue. Why are people making such a big deal about wow. it? It's just little, little things. You know, nobody should really make such a huge fuss. And of course, Tanzania's president, you know, you know we don't like him here. Like, I, I don't like him. He's, he, he's a very strange man. He has said that instead of... disappointment, that's what he is. And it's, he's saying that instead of Tanzania's to focus on the fact that Tanzania won the best, uh, park, best national park award, People are concerning themselves with like all these things that don't really matter. So we can't talk about two things at the same time. And I would actually I would say that women getting raped by strangers, busting into their rooms, is a much more pressing it's, issue. It's, it's right? terrible, mm. but it, it just shows once again, again how women's um, um, issues are being dismissed. Don't take it's so either. trivial. It doesn't have to be your wife. It doesn't have to be your sister. It doesn't have to be your mother. It's the person is a human being. Nobody deserves to be raped. Exactly. What's, what, what I really find annoying is that the people who are greasing up themselves, they've actually sat down to and think planned. that and planned it, that this is what I'm going out to do. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to oil myself because what I'm doing is wrong. So I'm going to go out so that nobody can catch me. It's and that also totally puts rubbish. pay to this idea that rape is spontaneous. It's like it's this not. thing where I saw this woman and I was so so captivated by her beauty. I was like, I must have, have her, her but now. In, exactly. Now you see people premeditate, it's you just, know, and it's not, it's never the woman's fault, okay? As some of you dummies like to say. <laughs> let, let, I just think it's, it's absolute rubbish behavior. It's, it, it's again, you feeling that you're entitled to a woman's body. A woman's body belongs, belongs to her. It does not belong to you. You don't, you don't have the right to take anything away from her. It's just absolute rubbish. And at this point, I want to say, some of you guys know, you have friends, you have uncles, you have fathers, you know some of them are, are, are showing rapey behavior, mm-hmm. and you don't say anything. When we say it, then we're talking too much, right? But if you know people who are acting this way, call them out. Tell them this is not the right thing to yes. do. It's absolutely disgusting. And you, you raise an excellent point. Even sometimes when people are sympathizing with the women, they start saying, I have a sister or I have a mother Mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have Have to to have, it shouldn't have to be somebody because it's now the person is related to to you. That that makes them not human. You know, it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to see the intrinsic humanity in everyone and understand that women getting violated is wrong. It's it's wrong. It's wrong. No, there's no, absolutely no excuse for that. So that's an issue that I saw that it's unfortunate. I have to start this season with another rape thing. You know, you guys know how I feel about rape. Amputate them, amputate their penises. That's it. That's, that's how I feel. 
you know, and it's unfortunate it has to come up, but this is what's happening. People yes. are greasing themselves up so they don't get caught. Disgusting. And that's really horrible. That's really horrible. And that's my in the news. Thank you. <laughs> Just getting it right into the news. Yeah, end. you've okay. got to. So my in the news is going to be on the recent communication services tax, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to say one point is that because we've been gone for a while, there'll be some things that we'll talk about that obviously have happened in the news already. Yeah. But if I feel it's relevant yeah, or I want to talk, talk about, about it, it, I'm going to talk about it, okay? Yeah. So you might hear some stuff that you feel like has been talked to death about already, <laughs> but like you yeah. haven't heard my perspective. <laughs> All right, so I have been living under a rock for the better part of this year, and that's something I'm going to get into later as to why. Mm -hmm. So it took me by a very unpleasant surprise when I went to recharge my credit sometime last month, and I was going to put 10 CDs and then bundle, and then I bought the 10 CDs, and it was short, mm -hmm. right? So I was furious. I was like, where's my money? Right. So... To, through the process of getting, you know, finding out what was going on, that was my introduction to the new communication services tax, a.k.a. talk tax. Right. So this talk tax is a 9% tax that's going to be levied on all uh, phone, like, transaction purchases. So if you buy credit or you... I, I don't know if it applies to mobile money, but definitely when you recharge it will take 9% of whatever you pay. So for every CD you recharge, you end up only getting 93 passwords. Mm -hmm. So according to the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, the top tax was raised in order to raise funds to build a viable tech ecosystem mm -hmm. to help combat cybercrime, to protect users' information technology and information security, and also to combat money laundering and other financial crimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a couple of things to say about <laughs> this tax. One, this idea of taxing them till they're dead has never worked and will never work, mm -hmm. right? So Winston Churchill said, for any nation to try and tax itself into prosperity is like a man standing in a bucket and trying to lift himself up by the handle, <laughs> right? If mm -hmm. we don't have money, it's not, then it's all of us, right? So taxing the citizens, the, you know, just increasing taxes, increasing taxes mm. is not a way to generate income for a nation. Right. Never been a sensible idea. Besides that, especially for, again, we always try and, you know, relate things to the African context, specifically the Ghanaian context. Now here, in our part of the world, you know, collecting taxes is basically like, pouring water into a sieve and trying to fill it up, right? right? No matter how much water you keep pouring in there, because the sieve is porous, it won't fill up. Mm. And for us, our institutions, the very government itself is it's bloated, so corrupt, yeah. inefficient, and corrupt. So no matter how much money keeps getting pumped It's not going to go to where it's supposed to go. It never gets... We never mm. see the, you know, ma the benefit, you know, of, of this, this influx of money, yeah. right? Now, two... Um, the thing is, we already have expensive phone tariffs in this country. So I was looking yeah. up um, statistics on the ITU, which is the International Telecommunications Union, which is like a subdivision. It's affiliated with uh, the UN. And in, so as of 2014, Ghana is actually 95th on the list of the cost of a mobile basket, what they would call like a basket of goods, but for mm -hmm. mobile for a month, right? Out of 182 countries. So oh, basically, wow. we're half, 50% of the world has cheaper phone services than we, we do, do as at now. That's ridiculous. So increasing, you know, making it even more expensive is, as usual, putting an extra burden on the citizens. And right? the one thing I found so odd is that even if you're trying to tax people, would you make it so obvious? Wouldn't you have let them um, sort of think that they're still getting 10 CDs when instead of saying you're getting so, 9 point something I'm wouldn't going you to rather, get to that yeah wouldn't you I'm rather say oh you're getting that. less megabytes than you know yes, it doesn't even yes. the whole approach doesn't kind of make sense okay so know. my third point <laughs> right. which is where I was coming yeah. to is this this communication services tax is actually not new mm. all they did this in October was increase it from 6% to 9% to nine, yeah. right which means that um Prior to that, the mobile companies were absorbing that tax cost, right. mm -hmm. 
Right. So either they were initially had it cut into their profit margins mm-hmm. and just absorbed the six percent, or they had already, you know, passed it along to the customer in the form of having raised uh-huh. tariffs. Okay. Right. right. Now this time it seems they didn't want the optics of having to increase their mm. tariffs for Ghanaians to insult yeah, them. <laughs> so they're like, well, we'll have you insult government <laughs> Exactly. So not only did they not, they so they could have just passed the 3% difference onto the customers. Mm-hmm. But what they decided to do is like, now, even that 6% we used to absorb, we're not going to absorb it mm. anymore. We're just going to have you guys up front mm. pay the entire 9%. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's what started happening. Of course, customer consumers Complain, were furious. Yeah. And they were like, hey, it's not us. It's government. Mm. So then, of course, the communications ministry came out and said that it's illegal, which it really isn't, <laughs> for uh, the telcos to charge this tax up right. front, mm-hmm. out of each recharge, mm-hmm. and that they should do it back end. Mm. But as somebody stated, you can't, when you levy a tax on someone, you can't tell them how, how to, to get the yeah. money to pay that tax, exactly. right? Exactly. So, they do it the way they want to. Exactly. Yeah. But I guess the main point here is that it's just really annoying to keep paying more and more and more money, whether to government or to telcos, who don't even pay their corporate tax, mm. right? They don't pay taxes. People haven't they've not been able to pin them down and even calculate properly how much tax they owe, much less have it been paid on time. But it's just frustrating. As usual, we suffer. We, we suffer, don't get yeah. better no service. Benefit, nothing. Get, it's still the same out-of-service area. Data don't work. Phones it's drop choppy, calls dropping. You know, Vodafone phone. with their very choppy internet. Exactly. It's just, it's just really so annoying. anyway, that's my in the news. Yeah. We have more taxes, more taxes, no benefits. But nothing is changing. Thank yeah. you. That's not yes. a good one. All right. So okay. On so to then to the song of the week. The fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> kind of hard, yeah. <laughs> so I've got three songs for you this week. The first song is by Adekun Le Gold and it's called Kele Megwe. Um, the song, I guess, talks about following, sort of following your own lead, not do, I mean, do, not doing what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. And it sort of translates to know yourself. Um, I think Adekun Lego doesn't really need any introduction. No, hopefully introduction. not, because no, he's not. amazing. He's a, so. He really is amazing. That's Simi's baby daddy. <laughs> I don't know if they have kids, actually. <laughs> I don't I think they do. Simi's husband, you should know who Simi is as yes, well. Yes, yes, he's also... Talked d- about here on the show quite a bit. Eddie mostly. Yes, but yes, she's yes, I love her, I love her yeah. Her now, so. And he's had uh, hits like Ire, Dam Delilah. He's really got a beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. voice. He kind of fine too. Yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. He's really good looking. And uh, Kelly McGuire is one of the songs that is my favorite at the moment. And the funny thing is that um, I think, I, I may be wrong, but at some point in the song, you can hear Simi's voice in the background. Oh, it's possible. I, yeah, yeah. And I find it so cute. Aww. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so beautiful. You know, they you know? hid their relationship. They just they came did. out like, hey, we're married. And we're like, eh, when were you guys it. even dating? Yeah. It turns out they've been. Dating on the low for like six years. Yeah, it's a long better time. that we it, keep yeah, your private life private because, yeah. you know, sometimes it's, so. it's just not worth it. All right, so that's Adekunle Gold with Kele Megwe. The second song that I have for you is Jidena, and mm. that's... <laughs> he's another fine man. Zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is a song called Vaporizer. Exactly. It's off of his album 85 to Africa. And what I really like about the song is the, all the instruments coming together. Mm. It's got a really nice, hard beat. And I quite like the album as well. There are a couple of songs on there that, that are really nice. I think Sufi Woman, and then there's, there's some, a couple of other ones. And I'm not really sure if I can describe Jiden as eclectic. I'm not sure. But that's yeah. the vibe that I He's get from his... classic man. Exactly. <laughs> that's the kind of vibe I get from his album as well. And the fact that he's also a beautiful man doesn't hurt. The you song know, the never song, does. Yeah, Vaporizer is really good. I think you should all go listen to it, that Jidena. The third song I have for you is from Kofi Kinata. Hey. And it's Things Fall Apart. <laughs> like, if you're Ghanaian and you haven't heard Things Fall Apart by now, then yeah, I guess you're living under a rock. Uh, it's, pro- two, pro- it's produced by two bars. Right, Shout out right, to right two here. Bars in, two bars yeah, right here. DS, DS Media. Is you know? <laughs> <laughs> and Kofi Kinata is a gem. Most of his songs really have like a message behind it. That's what I like With about him. A comedic, it's like yes. funny, but like it's yes. really hitting salient Absolutely. points as well. I love it. And in this song, he's basically questioning the genuineness of Christianity. All these, all these pastors and leaders, they do things more for themselves than they do for others. You know, just really questioning the, the, the whole Christianity thing. And so that's Things Fall Apart by Kofi Kinata. So that was three songs for you. Adekunle Gold, Kele Mewe, 
Jidena Vaporizer and Kofi Kinasa. Thanks for all the pop. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Right. So I also have three songs this week. Mm -hmm. And with the first, I'm happy to announce Jagged Edge is back, oh, y'all. Oh, Jagged Edge. Jagged Yay. Edge is back. Now, Look if you are of a certain age, <laughs> I don't want to say, if you're grown ass, grown ass folk like us. Like we are. Yes. Or you have excellent taste, you should know who Jagged Edge is. But basically, they're um, an Atlanta-based R&B quartet who... Honestly, are responsible for some of the best R and B hits from the early two thousands yes, to mid two thousands. Yes, yes, yes. Like really so many R and B music. Like I gotta be, let's get married, walk promise, out of heaven, yeah. walked out of heaven, on and on and on. Honestly, they're amazing. So in October this month, they released a song called Genie, hmm. and uh, yeah, it's I definitely worth checking out. Now I guess I don't know. There didn't seem to be much fanfare about it or anything. Hmm. I wouldn't say the song hits like the peak of where their artistic craft can get, right. but it's a cute little bob. It has, you know, a classic jagged edge sound, you know, the twins and the, it's the same four guys. Okay, nothing And, changed. you know, it's a pleasant, I, you, you play it through once, you probably hit repeat at least once or twice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's cute, so please check it out, and I think, it's, I love supporting, you know, these classic yeah. acts when they jagged come Yeah, Jagged Edge, they're good. So. Honestly, and they deserve our support, so check that out, Jagged Edge, Genie. Right. The second song is by a Nigerian artist called Joe Boy, mm -hmm. and the song is called Baby. Okay. Do you know that song? No, I okay. don't. Um, I'm obsessed with this song. Absolutely, <laughs> like it's like one of my favorite songs out of the moment. Uh, Joe Boy's real name is Joseph Akinfewa Donis, mm -hmm. and again, he's Nigerian. And he's one of the artists that got signed to Mr. Easy's Empower oh, right. label. Okay. Yes, so uh, I don't know, er last year or earlier this year, Mr. Easy decided that he wanted to give back, and so he had a, a sort of a you know, social media recruitment process where you submit you know a demo a video of you performing a song of some sort mm -hmm. and they selected 100 uh, artists and produced videos for them i think and i mm -hmm. think supported like an album process or whatever and joe boy is definitely one of the standouts from the empower 100 right. in fact there are a lot of amazing artists on there okay. but he's definitely one of the standouts there and actually is doing really well um at the recent headies he got at least four nominations or something so mm. uh and this song again it's just beautiful he has a beautiful voice it's such i love it i love is it this so. the one, is this the one which has, has like a cartoony youtube oh that's not the one that so, is the, the one, one. Oh, then, and I know it. then i know also it. shout outs to poker studios yes uh, the then video I know the song. visualizer is literally one of the cutest yeah things it, it is it is like cute so i have seen it i like yes, the song yes. yeah 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 I do. then i do so know the song. baby you've done that for me yes. yeah yeah I yeah, yeah. Think, for you. check yeah, i think if you haven't heard it, please go check it out. Watch the visualizer to actually like the song more. Mm. And so that's so number two is mm -hmm. Joe Boy Baby. And the third song is by an artist called Kimbra and it's called Settle Down. Now, Kimbra is a New Zealand based, she's a singer, she produces her own stuff as well. She's also an actress. And um, you might best know her at, um, for featuring on. Gautier's song, uh, Somebody I Used to Know. Do you remember oh, that song? Oh, yeah, I know that yes. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the girl that, that sang was a feature artist oh, on there. Okay. That's Kimbra. But before that, she had put out, I think she had already put out her album. Her first album was called Vows, mm -hmm. and it came out in 2011. And this song is the first single from that debut album, uh, and it's called Settle Down. And honestly, once again, she's just really dope. She's very quirky. Mm. She has a very retro vibe, and she has, you know, an eclectic, right? <laughs> Becoming a catch-all, but she is right. kind of eclectic. And definitely check out Settle Down, and you'd probably be more interested in listening to her album, which is fantastic. So my three songs this week, Jagged Edge, Genie, mm -hmm. Joe Boy, Baby, and Kimbra, Settle Down. Beautiful. Now we're on to What the F. So in some very bizarre news, in Bremen, in Germany, police were called to, you know, to defuse a, a very dicey situation. Now, what happened was that um, four men between the ages of 18 to 40 had gone to a store. They wanted to buy some plantain. Plantain? Plantain, yes, uh -oh. plantain. Is this how people... <laughs> I don't know. They didn't mention where the guys were from, so that was Who's right. buying plantain? I know. <laughs> that, so, 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 so
So then they went to the, to the store, and then the shopkeeper told them that, oh, this is the price. And they, apparently they got really agitated that it was so expensive. <laughs> so they started I feel, complaining. I feel their pain. <laughs> like, oh. Then they started complaining. The shopkeeper pulled out pepper spray because he oh felt threatened. Then they got the pepper spray from him and started spraying it on the shopkeeper. And then bottles started flying oh all over plantain. Now, the guys tried to run away, but then they were caught, uh, caught by the pol police and then arrested on um, bodily, I think bodily, bodily offense or something. Now, this seems like a very, you know, it's, it's kind of, you think it's, it's sort of funny, it's kind of, yeah, it, it, it shouldn't have to get to that. But diaspora kinky, diaspora <laughs> yam, diaspora plantain can cost you an arm and a leg. Yo. To be honest, mm. it can be really, really, really expensive. So I, I get where they're coming from. They didn't have to go all the way out like that. Listen, the but beans were already ready, cooked. And they just needed a plantain to be able to eat. That's the thing. Shopkeeper the thing. playing games. No, no. And I don't condone that. No, no, no absolutely not. Please kidding. don't go fighting over plantain. <laughs> And, and the other day, a friend of mine actually sent me an Amazon link and they were selling kinky. Ten pieces of kinky were going for $49. Ah. Can you imagine? That's 10 even of a discount. For 250 CDs. Like, why? <laughs> when I was a student, my sister and I, we were making kinky ourselves because at the time they didn't have all this package. You guys are so I know, honest. like, we do everything. It's just so ridiculous, to be honest, sometimes. <laughs> you can make some good money off that. Actually. I know. I've been thinking about things like that, you know? But then, uh, yeah, it's a funny story. But I just want to give you a few, something to take away. Um, when you buy your plantain or your yam and you're not using it immediately, if you're not careful, it might get rotten. So what you can actually do is just, you peel it and freeze it. Mm -hmm. You can do the same with plantain. I tried it recently. You can cut up your plantain if it's not too soft. You, you have cut to it up. blanch it first? No, no, no. You just cut it up, you freeze it. And then when you're going to cook it, for the plantain, if you're going to fry it, make sure it's still frozen. Make sure that your oil is very hot. And then put it in. Ah, and it turns out beautifully. You can wow. cook it as well. Yeah. With That's the yam, great. the same thing. The yam, you just cut it up, wait for the water to boil and salt it, and then put in your frozen yam. And it becomes, well, the outside is sometimes a bit like mushy, but it, 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 it's, it's perfect. It's okay. No, that's fantastic because I, you know, I'm alone right now. And so mm. I buy stuff and it tends to, because yeah, I can't freeze eat it, it fast freeze enough. It. I so I, I've been freezing a lot of like vegetables, mm, like blanch them mm, and freeze mm, them. But mm. I'm definitely going to try the plantain thing. The, for the sure. plantain, though, you need to be careful that the plantain is not too soft. When it's too soft, then it's a bit difficult. But mm. when it's sort of ripe but still hard, and you do that, it's it's perfect. Like awesome I tried tip. it, and I was like, this is beautiful. Nah, I'm doing this, yo. Also, you can do this with okra. If you buy okra, by the way, a tip for okra: if you want to check whether your okra is fresh, you just snap the tip. If mm -hmm. the tip snaps off quickly, then you know it's fresh. Just grate your okra boil it for like three minutes, put it in your freezer, it's perfect to use. So awesome. that's what you can do. Maybe you've seen the thing on sale and you feel like, well, this is cheap, I can do and, and store, so you can do that. And you can do the same if you're in Ghana as well. Mm -hmm. There's a time when there's a glut of plantain, do that freezing. Okay. Right. Excellent tip. So that's Thank it. You. From what the F to a few tips for mm -hmm. you. So that, that's what it is. Eddie's <laughs> an amazing cook, guys. Like, amazing. And she can make everything. You have no idea. That's like benefits of being her friend like she <laughs> crazy oh thank you thank you thank you okay so <laughs> my what the f is i guess it's a tragic comic story right mm. and it's also the thematic cousin of no matter how much water you pour into a sieve it won't fill up mm. in this case uh no matter how much money you give some people <laughs> they always manage to go broke mm. Or, if you will, a fool and his money are soon parted. Soon parted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, this is the story of Marie Holmes, who was a 20, she's a 26-year-old at that time, so mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Uh, single mom, four kids, the eldest, I believe, of which uh, has disabilities, cerebral palsy. Now, of course, she was struggling, down on her luck, working odd jobs, and working at McDonald's, mm -hmm. and she worked at Walmart trying to you know keep it together for her and her kids and she happened to win the lottery okay so she ended up winning 188 million dollars so a real windfall and decided to take the lump sum so when you take the lump sum it comes down a bit so she took the lump yes yeah. 127 million but then after taxes it actually comes came out to about 88 million mm -hmm. so what some people don't know is that the, they tax you almost 50 percent oh wow yeah when you win That's the lottery lot. whatever mm -hmm. number they say 10 million you're going home with five pretty <laughs> much right 
And basically, her winning the lottery is the last time anything good happened to that lady. Mm -hmm. So first, in the first part of the what the F, she got sued by the pastor of her church. Now, Kofi Kanata, please come and what? listen to... Okay. So, you know, I guess she said the pastor was, had been like a father figure to her. She was going through her numerous trials and mm. tribulations. And so when she won the lottery, she pledged some money to the church. Now, he said that she pledged 10% mm -hmm. of her winnings, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But when she ended up donating to the church, she only gave them... I say only, mm -hmm. but she gave them $1.5 million dollars. Yeah, and greedy pasta. Come the on. The pastor said, nah. Come on. That he, so he, he needs to be getting at least 10, 10, Why? $10 million dollars is what he was expecting. And so she can't just give one point. The nerve, though. The nerve, yeah. And so actually went and sued her. And um, his argument was that because she had said to him mm -hmm. that she was going to give him $10 million dollars, he had initiated certain expenses and certain <laughs> church projects. When he wait to get the money for his son? Hey, you stop playing hey, with somebody's money. He said he knew the money was coming, oh, so he Lord. used his own money in the meantime. And now he's like in debt, and she's not paying up and whatever. But is, is, is that her fault if he's not thinking? Why ah. don't you wait for the money to come in before you start <laughs> planning? Like, how do you start planning with somebody's money? So obviously that was like a real, you know, serious betrayal for her, you know, emotionally and everything. And um, so that was one thing. Then the second thing that happened is she spent a huge amount of money on a new house. Mm -hmm. But she went and bought it in the middle of nowhere because by this time everyone knew she had won the money and family was hounding her. Yeah, People yeah. were hounding her. And she just wanted to get away. But then it turned out that in her haste to get this house, she bought one the house was like too large to manage, not in the best condition, mm. and also happened to have been on land that used to be a slave plantation. Oh. So exactly. So then they were like, mm, there's bad vibes and she's not happy there anymore. Mm. And now she has this huge albatross of a house on her neck. Then third thing, oh boy. speaking of family, um, so her family one by one started turning on her oh, no. as as it had right mm. so some family members claimed that she stole the winning ticket from her grandmother <laughs> right and therefore either doesn't totally deserve that money or deserves at least to distribute it amongst all mm. the family members and you know how they say yo she you brand new now mm, you think you got yeah you got money so you don't know anybody again <laughs> and um then it later on came out that it's actually her mother who had bought the ticket and whose numbers they had used. Oh. Right. But the argument was that she gave her mother the $1 to buy the ticket, okay. so it's still hers. Yes, yes. But then everybody, because of these things, started feeling entitled to some, to of, some of the money. money. Mm -hmm. And it was bringing lots of bad blood, etc. But probably the worst part of this story is that, as usual, there is some dusty bum in the equation <laughs> so she has her last child's baby daddy um is a career criminal and ugly fool called lamar <laughs> aka hot sauce um <laughs> who had been in and out of jail just just bad news basically and um when she won this money she started she spent like millions just on him right buying cars mm. he was buying jewelry uh started by you know spending money on various side hoes mm. the usual story you know and after she won the money he was still getting in trouble with the law and ended up arrested three times mm -hmm. right now the problem is now prior to her winning this money obviously when he would get arrested his bail would be maybe ten thousand mm dollars -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. But after, once they knew that he was associated with her, uh, mm, the bail money suddenly started up. going up. The first time, he was bailed for $1 million. She paid. Mm -hmm. The second time, it went to three... Was it? Sorry. Yes. $6 million in oh, the second goodness. arrest. She paid. And the third time, it was $12 million. Now, it's not like he murdered anybody or whatever. I think he was trafficked, selling drugs mm. or whatever. But they knew that, that 
Somebody is able and to she pay kept money. coming and being dumb enough to keep bailing this man. Yeah, out. So, so they kept on. So in the high end, mm-hmm. she spent twenty one million dollars on bail alone for one dusty fool that who ended no up sense. going to prison for seven years. Ultimately, anyway, and she's there talking about she's gonna wait for him. Or whatever. <laughs> Good on her. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so my point is, first of all, like. When I heard this story, I laughed because I know for a fact, imagine if the tables were turned. Imagine if some guy mm. won a hundred and eight, almost $200 million. Mm. My sister, by the time <laughs> you get home from work that day, he's like, look, I'm leaving you, you ain't cute enough for me, me anymore. no yeah. more. Mm. Your kids are ugly, even though they're mine. <laughs> they're mine. <laughs> they're ugly. And I'm going to level up with an Instagram slay queen. Yeah. Goodbye. Pack your things and leave. Certainly, he will not entertain you cheating on him, mm. spending his money on side pieces, mm. bribing. Apparently, at one point, she was paying off side pieces to leave him alone. And so, like, so if you're doing the calculations, she's already she's got spent, no money left. Yes, she's got no money left. Spent more than half of that money in like five, six years, and. Mm. You know, people are like, by the time, you know, in the next decade or she's so, gonna she's going to be broken no time. Yeah, on yeah. the news crying about how she blew through millions. It happens yeah. all the time. All the recently, time. There are too many stories T-Pain about T-Pain was talking about how he blew through $40 million and was so broke that he had to ask people to buy Burger King for his Look kids because he didn't even have the $20 to do how that. How does that happen? How? 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 And this is like a caution. And it's like, you know, we want black people to win all the time. It's like we have this opportunity to become generationally wealthy, but because there's no financial responsibility, there's no, mm. I don't know, I don't know. She's here wasting all this money, it's gonna end up broke again. But the thing is also, maybe she doesn't know any better. She's never had that kind of money, so now that she's got the money, she doesn't know how to actually but manage it. But you know, it. when people say this, I'm just like, okay, but if you're used to spending $200, then mm. shouldn't you, better than me, know how to like that's what manage you think. a small amount of money? See, that's what you would think. For her, probably that money is now so much that she doesn't think that's gonna ever finish. I guess so. Mm. People are just like, oh no, there's no way that this money is finished with the 200 Now I've got so much money, I can spend it and spend it and it will still be there. She's not thinking. I do get the impression mm. that people don't realize that millions is not that much. Much, yeah. Like a million dollars, you can spend, uh, that's one house, mm. and you buy like six fancy Porsches or whatever, that's two million. Like millions can still be spent yeah. easily. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're not being financially responsible, it's just going to go so with no time. So, yeah. y'all pray for Marie Holmes <laughs> and her dusty ass baby father. <laughs> so, that was what the F. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical glitch here. Like, like, and like Kofi Kinata, things fell apart, <laughs> but we're back and we're straight into two passwords. So, in my two passwords today, we're talking about excusing the inexcusable. Uh oh. And I'll get into the details um, in a bit. So, a couple of weeks ago, um, there was an article on The Guardian um, on a woman who had been married for, I think I shared this with you had been married for 35 years she knew her mm. husband was cheating she had caught him on occasions she was always on the lookout for his side pieces she abandoned her friends because of this a marie holmes without the money mm. but mm. all for her prize as she called it of her being able to spend evenings together with her husband and anniversaries now that they're in their 50s now, I've had discussions with, or I've had conversations with single people and married people, and the opinions that I got were as varied as I expected. So my two persons today is excusing the inexcusable. Married men who cheat on their wives and the wives who condone it. Right. Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> so to say that it is, it's in a man's nature, nature to cheat is 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 nonsense it's nonsense Thanks. to say that it's Dead his back. sex drive is so abnormally high that he can't stay faithful to his wife is absolute rubbish Ma- married men will give you who tell you that oh my wife has gotten too big she's got a flabby stomach her breasts are hanging she's not as tight down there anymore all sorts of excuses to justify them being being um uh, them cheating on her and now, half the time they mm. say this when they're bald and wait, ugly oh, wait <laughs> I trust you I trust you okay. you as a guy you cannot expect that the person you married at 21 to be the same as 41 
some of some of your some of your the wives have have given birth to three four children but in your mind you've of you've, you've objectified your wife and expected to have the body of a 21 year old meanwhile some of these married men talking are the same ones who look as if they've swallowed a cow mm. but they're out there talking about my wife is this and my wife is that blah 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 now gentlemen cheating is not the new normal cheating is not normal if you um if you honestly think you have a sexual addiction problem you need to go see somebody right you don't you don't uh, go about cheating on, on your wife saying that oh yeah my wife doesn't want sex anymore i i can't handle it you so you you work it out with your wife you don't exactly. do it and and go and say ah this is what i need to do it's not right it's not right and to be honest, I think, I'm not a man, but this is what I think, that a lot of the time people are, these men are looking for validation. They are. They're a bit, of a, a bit narcissistic, so they're looking for validation that, oh yeah, man, I'm, I'm still the man. I still got so it. Let me, yeah, I still got it. So let me go, go mess around with this one, this one, this one, this one, for them to tell me, oh yeah, yeah, you're the greatest, like, you're the best, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the kind of thing that they need. And probably at that moment, you get that validation moment uh, temporarily. But then at the end of the day, you're back to, you really are back to square one. It's you fighting with your low self-esteem. There's no other reason you would do that apart from the fact that you've got a low self-esteem. One person is not enough for you, so you need to have several other people. Now, the reality, though, is that a lot of people, are, uh, women, are getting infected with STDs. Yes. I listened to a podcast the other day where, where this therapist has uh, people come into her sessions. And there was a guy who cheated on his wife, with a, I think with a prostitute or something. Hmm. He got, he, and he infected her with chlamydia. And you could hear it. I think it was chlamydia. You could hear it in her voice. She was so hurt. Like, she couldn't understand why he would do that. Right there and then, you've, you've, the trust that your wife has put in you, you've totally erased it, you know? And um, for somebody to tell you that, oh, um, oh, I made a mistake, I just made a mistake, it's, again, it's absolute rubbish. When, you're, when you go out to, to cheat on your wife, you're, you're making a decision, you've made a decision that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I am not satisfied or I'm, something is wrong with me, so I'm going to go out there and, you know, go cheat cheat on this woman and you can say all the nicest things about yeah, my husband is nice he's a good father he's a hard worker but he can still be a rubbish philandering mm. guy like that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't make him any less of a serial cheater right um and sometimes we take these matters we take you take these matters to the church the church may sometimes hmm. know that this guy is a serial cheater but he's not going to cheat he's not going to stop cheating but they'll still be encouraging the woman to stay yeah for what reason yeah because she's a member of your church and it makes your church look good that people in your church don't get divorced or don't get separated hmm. that's 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 absolutely rough i like i don't understand why people do this um um now people will say that uh, yeah, people now. Some men will tell you that, oh, my wife knows about this and she's accepted. This. That's the new and one. And I'm like, I oh, know, it's That's so ridiculous. The new one in town. I'm like, oh, she's mm. fine with it. So I'm like, hmm, does your wife really know, or is she poisoning you slowly and you really don't <laughs> know it, you know? Um, and for a long time, I really couldn't wrap my head around why do people, why do people, um, why do women stay? And in the past, I've been, I've been the one to say, oh, yeah, I've, I've had, I had the two persons, um, one, two persons that I've talked about, oh, work out or get, get out. out or work it out. And I've come to realize that, well, it's not as simplistic as I make it stay, as, as, I, as I said. Sometimes people want to leave, they can't leave. Sometimes people leave and get killed, right? Right, right. It's how, you see obsessive the, partners, yes. That they don't want them to leave. So it really isn't as simple as oh you know what oh, i'm just going to leave and it's, it's understandable but now to the second part of the two persons why do the women con apparently condone this and i think there are a couple of reasons first of all the stigma that's associated with divorced women is really really high society is really unfair to to divorce women you're yeah, a target good. failure yeah you're a failure you couldn't make it happen what's wrong with man. you you couldn't keep mm -hmm. a man that kind of thing the second reason probably it could be that well your husband's got a nice job maybe you're not working so you're enjoying all the perks that come with maybe your he told you not to work anymore 
right so now you have no independence exactly so you're stuck in a place where you can't really leave and yeah you're enjoying the perks that come with it sometimes it's all about family units so you have maybe you have kids you want to, the family to stay together or maybe your husband is famous and you also like to <laughs> bask in the know, glow right? of fame so you're like oh well he's cheating but what's a little std on the side <laughs> if i can enjoy this kind of thing you know <laughs> Um, and all the things I've mentioned are actually valid reasons. They are valid reasons. But you as a woman, you've got to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth your em emotional health, your mental health to stay in a situation where you know? Not to mention physical health, right? Because today is chlamydia, tomorrow it's it might AIDS, be HIV. Or exactly. some uncurable syphilis Herpes or gonorrhea or, or something, mm -hmm. right? Is it really worth it? Like, every, I, tr I try... For me, it's it's difficult not to be judgy about this because I, I feel like okay, if I was no in a situation, brainer, right? I wouldn't mm -hmm. do it. I would leave. I would leave. If I knew you were cheating, I would leave. I don't want to get sick. I want my peace of mind. I would leave you. But it's it's sort of like asking your husband to go ahead and get all the STDs, all the illegitimate children while you just sit down and because, yeah, I'm flashing a ring, so it's hmm. okay, you know? But having said all that, the onus is always, 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 people listen, it's always on the married man who made the vow to the wife, right? He made the vow not to cheat on her. So the onus is on him to stay away from, this, from the side chicks. Not on the wife who may be condoning it, not on the side piece who probably doesn't even see him as anything worthy to partner with. Like, I know. who is this guy who's cheating on his wife? Why would I even want to be in a relationship with him she's probably seeing him as a cash cow yeah get some money from him and then on to He's the next dummy, so right yeah so now you're basically alone in your marriage you're married but you're alone your husband is having the time of his life he doesn't you know? come home he doesn't come home he's probably a wonderful wonderful father wonderful hard worker you know but he's still a terrible philandering guy and at this point, I probably hear men scream, but what about the women? They also cheat. Yes, they do. Why aren't you talking about it? You can talk about You feel free. I want to talk about things from our perspective. So feel exactly. free. And I'm actually, I would actually be quite interested to hear what guys have to say. Well, if you have something to say, yeah, tweet at me, send us a message. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. But cheating is not normal. Married men, you need to stop this, this kind of thing. It's not, it's not cute. It's not cute. Just, Thank you know, you. That's, that's what and it is. I just want to add to that, that, mm. like, I mean, I understand, like, once you've been in a relationship for a long time, sometimes the passion goes away, the magic dies, mm. maybe, truly, you're mm. not physically attracted to the mm -hmm. person anymore. Mm -hmm. These are not excuses, Cuses. that That's is the, the case. Thing. Sit the person down, be like, listen, you know, I've, I love you, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm not in love with you, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what do we do? do. I, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to leave or... Talk to your person. You don't just be like, okay, so I'm going to go to the club and get some younger. Is that a solution to the fair. problem? That's not fair. I just feel it's that's not just right. dumb. That's just dumb behavior. And honestly, a lot of guys just find excuses anywhere, any type of excuse. I had a headache, mm -hmm. and the and only the wife, thing mm -hmm. that could cure it was a blowjob yeah. for some good. Yeah, my Please. wife didn't want to, so I had to go yes. out and get it. Well, because she, yeah, she hasn't. Have... Listen, look. If you have a problem with your marriage, discuss it with the person you're in, in your the marriage, marriage with. with. It's you so can't simple. use some side chick as paracetamol. That's stupid and it won't cure the issue. Mm -mm. And you're just going to make things worse in the long run. And I'm sick of it, honestly. And that's why y'all be getting broken glass put in your food. So. And a lot of, I, I don't know whether people take pride in being like, oh, I'm the king, the king of community. Yes, like it's like, why? Ego why? Thing. Like, why? It's For ego what? Stroke. For like, what? Yeah. Oh yeah, me, Charlie. Jamila, no all lie, the girls. Oh, yeah, like, like if no, I want some girl, girl all I have to do will buy is walk up to her. <laughs> and, so, and so what? <laughs> Please. Meanwhile, there's some boy on campus giving it like for free. Yeah, he, he's walking and whatever and still getting mm -hmm. girls. You, mm -hmm. you have to pay people to be with you and you think it's something to be proud of. Yeah, I don't know. It's just wrong. Yeah, right, it's yeah. just wrong. It's wrong. So that's my two pieces. Excuse the you. inexcusable. This is just, it's just wrong. Thank you. And I... Unfortunately, we have to keep restating the same things over and over because you guys yeah. want to be wild and out mm. here. Not 2P fam. 2P fam would never do that. But <laughs> and the, 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 some of these men have the, the, the audacity that they have. Ah, oh, it's just so, I don't know, it's just annoying. Stepping up to you with a whole ring you know? on. What, what, what are you doing, bro? Like, <laughs> like why? For what? Then they're like, so oh. be lying. 
Or or they'll be like, oh, if I'm married, that's my problem to deal with, not your. Uh, are you all right? Listen. Anyway, let me not even get. On I know, this. I like, know, I know, I know, I know. We're not. Good. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so my two pests was this week. It's gonna be kind of like freewheeling and rambling and all over mm. the place and somewhat self indulgent because I'm about to talk about me, 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 me for a while, <laughs> but. <laughs> From this, I think that some people out there will be able to glean something and something useful. So my two pesos this week is basically saying that you are stronger than you know. Oh, yes. Lot. So as I said in one of the early segments, I've been living under a rock uh, pretty much the whole year. And the reason is simply put that I've been dealing with like severe levels of anxiety. And even today, like, I was falling apart earlier for no reason, really. Just, just that's my life now. <laughs> and the most shocking part of this is that I'm one of those people who, you know, when I was on social media and people would be tweeting, oh, my God, I have anxiety. I'm like, mm. listen, find something to do, right? <laughs> like, I was somewhat dismissive of it. And I still think some of those people are just talking for clout. Mm. But... I've come to realize that it is a very serious thing and it can seriously disrupt your life and, you know, it's real and just because you're strong and you identify, you know, you're like, I'm logical, I'm focused, I won't get anxiety. Mm. It can happen to anybody, right? Because I'm living proof of that and I'm (laughs) more surprised than anyone else. Now, I don't want to get into what my triggers were because there was one main incident that literally drove me to this place and I've been like that for months now, Mm -hmm. um, which we don't have to, nothing major, but Mm -hmm. there was a triggering incident and everything like that. And so, you know, it got to a point where when my phone rings, it's like somebody in a scream mask jumped out of a closet. There's like that Mm -hmm. much level of like, (gasps) you know. So I started turning off my phone ringer and then it would get to the point where I could check my phone and have 10 missed calls and 20 messages or whatever. And then that would give me anxiety anxiety, because I'm like, now it's it's too too many people, whatever. So I stopped talking to people on the phone. Mm. I stopped messaging people back and then I couldn't do social media. Even on a good day, Mm. social media can get draining the other emotionally day, um, I'm, I'm sorry i'm not sure if i told you but i i, I got off twitter it, got, it was too much there was yeah. so much negativity yep, and you're like, yep. Whew, i need a break yeah i need a yep. break you know so i'm um, i came off twitter i came off facebook i came off instagram i've slowly crawled back to instagram but so then i was in this place where i'm like wow i can barely function and that was giving me depression now Mm -hmm. so then i'm sitting there i'm like depressed with bad anxiety and thinking to myself is this the new normal now is this Mm -hmm. it is this who i'm gonna be now like losing friends because they're like what the hell i've been calling you don't call me and then i said you know what This will get better. And the reason I know that it will get better is because I had already been in a bad place and come out of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that and then just wrap this up. So Mm -hmm. sometime in 2013, uh, some armed robbers broke into our house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And basically held me hostage um and threatened to kill me and all that unless my parents gave them money yada 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 now i'm saying yada 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 but (laughs) honestly like you can imagine it was like one of the worst things i've ever been through and when i say the ptsd was real Mm -hmm. it was so real that i kind of lost it for a while like i wouldn't i would lock my door my bedroom door around five thirty the minute the sun was going down i've locked my door I won't come out for any reason, which was very difficult to do, mind you. I'd be mm-hmm. in there hungry, needing to pee, but I'm, like, too terrified to open my door. And I would sleep with clothes on just in case I'd have to jump up and mm-hmm. do something. I'd slept with a knife. Like, it got bad, right? And so, and even then, I got to a point where, like, I couldn't... Before, I used to watch... I still do watch a lot of horror films, no, right? No, I don't. But then... Mm-mm. Now, and even now, it's like you watch, and you know, a lot of times you see people getting kidnapped and stuff. And before, I could watch it with, like, complete emotional detachment, Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just a movie or whatever. 
But now I'm just like, hmm. if people only knew how bad that feels or like how terrifying that whole experience is to have mm. strangers come mm. and rough you mm. up and everything. Mm. So like I can't even enjoy some of these things anymore. Um, but so eventually I ended up leaving. You know, I couldn't stay in my house anymore. So I left for a while and I gradually and it took maybe six months. Right. And I'm still at the point where it's a bad idea to roll up on me. It was always a bad <laughs> idea to roll up on me, frankly, because I have a bad temper. But now, like, don't roll up on me with even the slightest bit of aggression. Like, you're going to get it. I'm ready. Like, I stays ready all the time now. But what I want to say is at that time, I didn't realize that every single day got a slight bit better. Okay. Right? Everything. Some days, you don't even notice that you're progressing right and it got to the point where when I finally came back to Ghana I was like I'm not going to let this mess with me anymore I'm gonna try and do me yeah and I took it one day at a time and eventually things did get better so basically what I'm trying to say is again you are much stronger than you know honestly you have a depth of strength and emotional resilience that you are not aware of Mm -hmm. and even in your darkest moments like then like kind of like now that I'm just like what the hell I'm just I just want everyone out there to know that whatever you're dealing with it's not permanent honestly and it will feel that way in the moment and the next day and weeks will go by and you're like I I can't get my life back on track but you're not noticing that every day you're getting a little bit stronger Mm. you're getting a little bit more able to cope with what you're going through that situation is slowly resolving itself or you're taking steps to do so Mm. so i just want to say hang in there whatever you're going through hang in there if you need someone to talk to find someone to talk to um, I can't understate the value of seeing somebody professional mm-hmm. if that's what it yeah, comes yeah, to. Honestly, yeah, honestly. I didn't do that. that, that is, yeah, if you, can if you can't it. afford it. And here, of course, there's a stick. First of all, you don't know who to talk to, where mm-hmm. to go. Like, to what, as I did, to just kind of white knuckle your way, like, I'm going to. Fo- mm-hmm. It's not the best. You can get there. But it would be so much easier, I think, if you have someone to talk to, if you have, a, you know, friends. They can't. From a professional standpoint, no, they can't help you, but they can provide a listening ear, and and they can help. If you can't leave the house, they'll come to you, if it's even one or two people, because now I'm at the point where, like, I can't talk to more than five people, Mm. I just can't. (laughs) But those five people mean everything to me, and they've held me down so much, and gotten me back to the place where I'm kind of functioning again, so... Again, you are stronger than you know. For whoever needs to hear this, you're stronger than you know. You will make it. You will get there. Just hang in there. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's uh, to be honest, that's really beautiful. And I can relate. I can relate. You, you're stuck in some, sometimes you're in a situation where you feel like, oh, I'm not, never going to get out of exactly. it. Last, remember last year, de- last year, December? I was also feeling kind yes. of, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I, I was do. Feeling, I do. I was because like, you oh had been God. through, yeah. yeah. Like, how am I going to get... But then, right now, I feel like, yeah, I'm that okay. wasn't I'm even a thing. Great. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, you will you will get better. It does get better. It, it does. does. It gets better, mm. and you're stronger than you know. That's beautiful. All beautiful right. way to end there. End so, the we made it Thank you. Episode, episode one. one. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. We miss you all so much. We're so happy to be back. Yes, and, we uh, are. Absolutely. Hit us up. We want to hear from you. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, then. Bye. Bye.